Okay. Hi, my name is Desmond Anderson. Um, this is my project on flowers, unseen colors. Um, here I have the primary primary literature source. This study was conducted by a group of uh, scientists and uh, at the university or at Clemson University, University of Clemson, one or the other. Um, but yeah, a bit the picture in the background is kind of a representation of what I'm talking about. Um, so let's just dive into it. Um, as my introduction, uh, like I said before, this was a study conducted by um, Clemson University scientists. Uh, so there are these yellow flowers that they had seen. Um, they're often referred to as silver weeds, um, or like a silver weed plant. Um, and it, they were like the base plant of the study. And so essentially they uh, studied these under like UV light to see what colors are visible. visible. Um, so the silverweed can produce colors that only certain um, insects can see, um, the insects that will pollinate the plants. Um, the study discusses how certain sub substances, sub substances uh, within the petals um, create kind of like a bullseye um, formation among, like on the surface of the uh, flower that's intended for like the insects that are going to pollinate to kind of like know where to go, you know. Um, so leading into that, how it works, um, pollinators uh, see in the ultra, ultra, ultraviolet spectrum, um, meaning that they can see colors that we can't see as humans. Um, the flowers that reflect or absorb ultraviolet wavelengths give the perception of different colors that we can't see um, to the pollinators or the insects that are you know, doing the pollinating. Um, different substances in the petals create a bullseye for, pollinate, uh, for pollinating insects. Um, and a wide range of plants have concentrations of UV absorbing chemicals at the base of the fl uh, flower petals, so towards the middle. Um, they have chemicals that are absorbed, making them darker, while the tips of the petals reflect the chemicals, making them brighter. Um, going back to the picture, there's a picture on this slide. Oh, okay, well, on this slide right here, that demonstrates that this would be the normal flower colors that we can see and under ultra ultraviolet the UV light this is what we can see so this is just a video explaining uh, the ultraviolet light um, I'm just going to kind of show a bit of it here um, here's like a demonstration of what it looks like and that this is something that we cannot see so there's this whole video, it's a almost five minute long video that talks about the whole process, but I am going to be talking about the process. I cannot. Okay. Um, so this is, this is huge, uh, plastic, plasticity. Um, so essentially, scientists studied the silverweed at different elevations in the southwest in southwestern Colorado. Um, what plasticity is is de it's defined as how differing traits arise in the same organisms under different environmental conditions. Um, this is an important concept to understand uh, how organisms adapt to survive to change. Um, plasticity is one mechanism that. Um, by which natural populations can respond really rapidly to changing climates and persist under those climates. Um, so they do change according to like climate change and just just any other like sort of global change. Um, it's kind of like the flexibility within like in simpler words, the flexibility in in invite like their habitat, like how they can change depending on where they're at. Um, so plastic change in UV pigmentation benefited the plant, um, especially the ones at high elevations because it increases 
uh, because of increases in ultraviolet uh, absorption on the petals resulted in increased pollen viability. So it does help them and they will reproduce and get pollinated and the, the whole process is sped up. Um, and more, uh, it just happens a lot more often, essentially. Um, climate change, I just had to write about this one um, because considering how us humans have such a large impact on the constant change in the environment, we can praise plants like this um, and the ability um, to adapt based on its plasticity. Uh, climate and global change affects silvery plants to either die off or affect its ability to attract pollinators. So the fact that it can do this um, with different colors to attract pollinators is very, <laughs> it's mind blowing to be honest. Um, although the plant has the ability to adapt itself um, under any circumstance, well, most circumstances, there's still a need for us as humans to make a conservation effort, um, to make conservation efforts uh, so the plant can flourish and will not have to continue to adapt to what we've caused. Maybe, you know, just <laughs> be what it is. Um, and then why is this research important? So the study that is being conducted will help scientists to better understand how not only organisms can respond to environmental change, but even be able to predict what can happen in the future um, based on how it's changing or, you know, just like it'll help scientists like understand what's going on and maybe we could catch something before, um, you know, stuff goes, goes, goes wrong. So this is huge. Um, that's a huge part of it. Um, how will the organisms uh, how well some of the organisms will be able to survive rapid environmental change, such as global global climate change, um, like I just talked about. Um, and then this can also be very helpful in agriculture because some of the same UV sensitive pigments at work in the silver weed are also present in commercial crops such as mustard and, and sunflowers. So this is something that we have also found in our everyday lives. Um, and could benefit how we <laughs> deal with our agriculture and um, work, work our crops and, and stuff like that. And here's some of my reference, uh, my references. Um, <laughs> for credits, I was the only one that did this, but um, for the references, I used Clemson's actual. Um, uh, their their actual website they because they wrote about their own project themselves and then Science Daily kind of showed me more about that and then I still do have right here the um, primary literature source and that is my presentation.